Hello and welcome to another CS0 Intro to Java Programming video. In this video, we're going to take a look at common errors that can happen while making loops. In the previous two videos, you should have learned a little bit about the basics of loops, what a for loop, what a while loop is, what a do while loop is, and how they all work. Learn the basic syntax, learn about how they could be how they could be used and, and how flexible they can be. We also learned about count controlled loops and sentinel controlled loops and how they differ from one another. In this video, we're going to look at some of the common errors that uh, can occur when making loops. I have this class here called Common Errors, and it's got a main method, and it is not a GUI, so there's no JFrame. It's just going to output things to the console. Let's start by looking at infinite loop number one. I'm going to run it, then we're going to analyze the output and see if we can figure out why it would, it would do the thing that it's doing. It's printing out count zero over and over and over and over and over again. This is an infinite loop. An infinite loop is one that you enter the body of the loop and you keep repeating over and over and over and over and over and there's no stopping that loop. If we think back to the previous videos, we talked about comp controlled loops. They always had a control variable which was going to be updated and as it updates it's going to move us closer to the loop end condition. Well this one is not getting closer to the loop end condition. It seems as though maybe the control variable is count and that count is not updating. It's staying at zero. Let's take a look at the code and see if we uh, can confirm that. Infinite loop one. It's got a control variable called count. While count is less than 10, system out print line count count. So um, it's printing count in the body, but count never updates. We're missing that update portion. Now here's the deal. I put this one on here because this is the most common error that I make when doing count controlled loops with while loops. In fact, almost every time I make a count controlled loop with a while, I forget the update. And the reason is because most of the time I do count controlled loops, it's with a for loop. But sometimes the, the program structure necessitates a while. And if that's the case, then I, I use a while, but um, ultimately, since I don't do it very often, I forget this, count plus plus. Don't forget that, because that's how you get an infinite loop. If you forget to do the update, the control variable never moves its state closer to the end condition. So if count is zero, it gets in here, it prints out count zero, it doesn't update, it's still zero, it's not getting closer to 10, it's still zero, it's still zero, it's still zero, it's still zero and it'll never get closer. Now you might notice when I hover over this in IntelliJ, IntelliJ is smart enough to tell us um, what's happening with that loop. In this case it gives us this tooltip variable count is not updated inside of loop. If I click on more it's going to um, tell us all the things that could happen. So it's telling us that there's potentially a problem with this. Alright let's take a look at infinite loop number two. The output of infinite loop number two is different. It seems to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's take a look at why that is. It's still not going to end. And that's because we are moving away from our loop end condition. And this is something that happens a lot too. Now, there are going to be times that you do um, reverse traversals or loops that count backwards to get you from the end of a, a collection to the beginning. Now, here's the deal. You're going to do a lot of forward traversals where you're counting the loop upward from zero up to, but not including the length of the collection. But sometimes the program um, necessitates that you count backwards. And um, given that you do that one thing all the time and the other thing not as much, you might be in habits of updating 
uh, as incrementing instead of decrementing. So here's my, my program. Count is 10, while count is greater than 0, print out count and then count plus plus. It would be a habit just to quickly type out count plus plus there in the update because that's normally what we're doing. Um, so it's very easy to forget to do that, minus minus, to decrement, to move us closer to the loop end condition. Remember, your update always needs to move you closer to the loop end condition. If it doesn't move you closer to the loop end condition, your loop never ends and it's going to be infinite. Let's take a look at infinite loop number three. Count 10, count 10, count 10, count 10, count 10. So we can clearly see that it's not updating. Let's see why that is. This is an error that I don't do, that I don't have happen to me very often. And um, the reason for that is you might see that when I make a loop header, that's how I usually start. Or if it were a while, I type it out like that. I put the parentheses for the condition in first, and then I put the curly braces for the code block in next. The curly braces for the code block are going to block together um, uh, lines of code so that they are executed together with the body of the loop. Now the way that loops work, they work exactly like if and else. And we talked about this on if and else, some of the pitfalls of, of writing code with if and else is that if you don't use those parentheses and you have multiple statements below an if, only the statement directly below it will be executed. So what I have here is I've got three statements below my while, but only one of them is going to be repeated because I don't have them surrounded in a code block. This is a pretty common error if you're not in the habit of making your braces immediately. So I would just recommend that anytime you type out a while or a for or an if or an else, immediately put those curly braces in. It's so simple. You just hold shift, hit both parentheses, and go right down to the right, and you've got your braces. Get in the habit of doing that, and you're going to avoid this kind of problem. Also, even though braces aren't necessary on all loops, if you only have one statement below the, in the body of the loop, you don't need these braces but they add visual clarity to your code. They make it clear where the where the scope of the loop starts and ends. Is it necessary? No. Um, do, do people really care? No, not really. But um, just for your own sake, it's going to add clarity and it's going to make sure that you don't run into any of those pitfalls with syntax errors. So to fix this, I really want to have that. Okay, we need to make sure our update is inside of those braces. Let's look at one more error here. And this area error can be um, difficult. And actually, sometimes any of these infinite loops can be really hard to find, and never entering loop can also be hard to find. And you're just going to see my output for this one is going to say, loop done. The loop body was never engaged, so we never printed out anything in the body. And this one is called never entered loop. Count is 10. While count is less than 0, count plus plus. So our control variable is outside the range of the, of, of the uh, um, conditional statement to start with. It's higher than 0, so we never even get in. There are several things that could have been wrong with this one. Um, count may have been initialized wrong, maybe it was supposed to be negative 10, and then count upward towards 0. Maybe we had all kinds of things wrong, maybe it was supposed to be while count is greater than 0, and then count minus minus. All kinds of problems could have caused this, but um, we did not get into the loop for whatever reason that is. Now these are not the only types of errors that can happen. There are limitless numbers of errors with loops, and you're going to have these errors happen and I still have them happen from time to time. In larger programs, um, the, uh, you know, the values that, that are used for a control variable might be set in one place in a method or even in another class and then used in another class or another method. So there's 
quite a bit of abstraction between the point where your control variable gets a var uh, value and the loop starts and ends. Um, and uh, it can be really hard to figure out why that loop continues. Also, sometimes you might have loops that don't provide you any kind of visual feedback. An example of visual feedback is uh, things printing out to the console. So this is an example of visual feedback right here. We're seeing these, these statements printing out in the, in the console from the body of the loop. Well, you're not always going to have, in fact, a lot of times when you've got loops, you're not going to have any kind of statements in that loop that are going to give you visual feedback. And that loop just might be going forever and, and, uh, or maybe not ever enter, and, and you don't know why immediately. The code might be so big that it's hard to find where that problem is. Uh, so you're just going to have to get in the habit of, of thinking back to the common types of errors. And then, at some point, learn how to use the debugger. The debugger is a very powerful tool that helps you figure out what the errors are and how to fix them. Anyway, those are some common errors, and by no means all the types of errors that you're going to run into. But keep these in mind as you are debugging your programs. Are these some of the errors that are causing your programs to not work? All right, thanks for watching.